and it would be able to do some sort of task that you code it to do. Okay. Something simple like that. Um, so uh, this one is called Circuit Playground Express, and I know that both the Circuit Playground Express and the microdisc <coughs> that you have there are ones that Mesa has used before. They also use Arduinos. Um, I'll tell you that these two, the Circuit Playground Express, which is this kind of circular one, you're free to open it up if you want to. Uh, these are new kits, so first one I'll clean these up. Uh, this round one, it is a little device that will be able to code using an online coding platform. Okay, so you don't have to download any specific app or anything like that. Uh, it can work on any computer that has access to the internet. So you could use it with a Chromebook or something like that. Um, and essentially, if you look at the Circuit Playground Express, uh, let's just kind of pull it out and look at it. It's this round device. Uh, and uh, if you have good eyesight, and you'll see some of the different components on here. It's got, uh, you'll notice there are kind of two buttons on it that are there. It has a place to plug it in for a battery pack or for a USB port to plug in the computer so you can code it. Um, it's got these lights. So kind of around the edge, there are 10 different LED lights. Those are those kind of white things in a circle around there. So these are, are, um, are LED lights that can be different colors. So you can code it to turn on different colors for those things. Um, there is, if you look on here, there's like a place that has an ear or eyes, so that means that it has a, um, has a microphone, so it'll be able to hear sounds. Um, there is something that can detect light, um, so it has all these different things. And when we're talking about any coding, actually, you're probably going to be talking about inputs and outputs. So an input is something that you do to it um, that will like trigger something else to happen, and the output is what happens as a result of the input. So for this, maybe the input is uh, I press this button here. Okay? I press the button, that's an input. I think the output is it makes uh, three of these lights turn on red. That might be what you code it to do. Is that I code it that the input, press this, uh, this A button, uh, output, those specific lights turn on red. Okay? So that might be a simple code. Maybe the input would be it hears a sound, and the output is that it makes a different noise. So you can code it to do that. So that is essentially what a microcontroller would do, is you code it to be able to get an input and then give whatever output you want as a result of that. Okay. Um, these uh, different types of microcontrollers have other things on them as well. Uh, so this one has, uh, also you'll see that there's like a, a, a thermometer. It still has a thermometer, so it can detect temperature. So notice it has like a little so it can detect temperature. So maybe you code it that if it goes above you know, a certain temperature, then I want it to put, uh, turn the lights red. If it goes below a certain temperature, I want it to turn the lights blue. That could be your, your coding for it, so things like that. The other thing that this uh, Circuit Playground Express has is around the edges, you'll see that there are this little kind of, uh, kind of copper colored, uh, brass colored, uh, bolts that are there. Those are called pins. And so with that, we can connect wires to it to other devices. So maybe I want to control a motor. So I have certain ones of these pins and I connect it to a motor. And so that could be my output. So maybe my input is that um, it, um, it senses a certain amount of light and then the output is it turns the motor on. So that's kind of what we do. And so the uh, the Circuit Playground Express, like I said, has an online uh, platform that you would use to code it. And so for that, for this one, it is um, this uh, website. So it's makecode.beatapproof.com. And I'm so sorry about this projector. It's not really <laughs> Makecode, M A K E C O D E. Dot Adafruit, A D A F R U I T, dot com. So Adafruit is the manufacturer of it. So MakeCode is the platform that is, I believe it's a Microsoft platform, 
um, that they use for some of these different controllers. It's an online platform. You go to the website to be able to see these things. And you'd be able to click on my projects and it's a big plus sign and it'll take you to the place to, to code it. Okay. So uh, we can code it in JavaScript or in block coding. And you'd be able to just drag and drop the green. So in this, there's kind of three sections to it. And I'm not going to go too much over the, um, the circuit playground on express. I'll do some more with the microbit, which is the next uh, microprocessor. Um, there's kind of three sections to it. One is the simulator. So over here you can see it looks like the circuit playground on express. It's the simulator. Um, we'll be able to code our things, and then we can test it on here. Uh, like if I code it to have a button make something happen, then I can come over here and click on the button and see if it, it does what I want. In the middle, there's a menu of different blocks that are available. And on the right is the workspace. So this is where I would drag and drop some blocks to be able to build up my code for my, my program. So this is what um, like the Circuit Play Playground Express one would look like. The other one is called a micro bit. And um, I'm going to pull this one out. This is one that I'll let you guys see so you can build have one to play around. Um, so the micro bit is the same type of thing. It's a, it's a, um, it's a microprocessor. And this one also has a lot of the same types of, of things that that other one has. Um, and I'll just go over a couple of things with this one. So again, it has some different things. If you look on the front of it, you'll see that it has two buttons there, an A and a B. They're labeled A and B. And it also has this grid here, this array of LED lights. So there's this 555 grid here in the middle. Those are each one is an LED light. So you can have them turn on and off. Um, these ones, as opposed to the other ones, these ones only are red. So you can only have red colors on these here. The other one, uh, the, the uh, uh, Circuit Playground Express, those ones are multicolored LEDs. So those could be different colors. Okay. So on the front it has those things on top. On the micro bit, on the bottom it again has the pins where you can connect it to other devices. Um, and then if we look on the back, we'll be able to see some of the other components to it. So this one has, um, you'll be able to see if you can, can read all that little, little text there. It has a speaker, it has a microphone, it has a compass, so it can tell if it's going to say be north, east, south, or west. Um, it has um, an antenna on it, so it can. Um, detect uh, Bluetooth signals and actually it can communicate between microbits. So you can send a signal from one microbit and another one can detect it. Um, it has on it, uh, it has a thing called a accelerometer, which is a really cool part of it. Um, this, the Circuit Playground Express has an accelerometer as well. What an accelerometer does is it can let it know how it's oriented in space. So is it facing up? Is it upside down? Am I sitting it to the left or to the right? Am I shaking it? So like your phone has an accelerometer in it, so it knows if you have it in like portrait mode or landscape mode, and then it would change which how things are shown on the screen. So the accelerometer lets it know how it's facing, or if you shake it, or something like that. So this the microbit has that as well. And so maybe if I'm thinking about inputs and outputs, maybe my input is going to be if I shake it as the input, and maybe as an output, then it shows, you know, turns on the LEDs to make a sound, you know? Or maybe I tip it to the left, and as an input and the output is, it makes an arrow facing towards the left, okay? So, so you can code it to create different things like that. Um, and so, what I'm going to do, just really quickly, if the folks have their own laptops, you can, you can do this with me. Um, I'm going to go to um, the one for microbits. So this one is makecode.microbit.org. So makecode, M-A-K-E-C-O-D-E, uh, microbit, M-I-C-R-O-B-I-T.org. So makecode.microbit.org. And uh, this is where we'll be able to code some stuff on here. So let's. Let's go to a new project. Um, so if I click on a purple plus sign here for a new project, I'm going to give it a name, and I'll just call it test. That's my kind of test program here. And so 
So again, we have a simulator here on the left. In the middle are some menus, and on the right is the workspace. And so I'm going to create a simple program like what I just told you guys. So I'm going to make it so that if I shake it, it's going to make a, uh, a sad face. Okay? So for this, we're going to grab um, some different inputs. So there's an input menu here, which is the second one, the pink one that says input. I'm going to grab that input menu. And we have this one that says on shake. I'm going to drag that over to the workspace. Let me make this a little bit bigger so it's a little easier to see. There we go. So it says on shake. Okay. So it's the pink menu, that second one that says input. And the red one says on shake. Drag it over there. And I'm going to go to the basic menu with that top blue one. And there's one that says uh, you show LEDs which has that grid, and I can turn them on and off. So if I grab this and drag it over, I can like turn on different ones. So maybe I'll do uh, this, and I'll make a sad face here. Okay. Okay. There's my sad face, okay? And so now it has, it, uh, when it says on shake, when I shake it, it's gonna show the LEDs. So if I come over to the simulator, there is a little button that shows up that says shake. I can also just move my cursor back and forth on it, to make it shake, so I click on the shake one, and it will make the sad face. Okay. So there, I've created a simple program here with an input and an output. Maybe if I do another one that says, maybe if I click the B button here, I want it to do an arrow to that side. So I'll do input, on button, same price, let's change it to B. And I'm going to put inside here, I'm going to show LEDs. So now, if I narrow going down, so now if I press the B button, it should make an arrow going down. Okay, if I press the shake, so I can have multiple things that happen. So we can do inputs and outputs to create things that happen. So this is kind of the basics of what um, a, a microprocessor. Uh, if I want to make it so that it is, uh, I can control other devices, then I can use the pins. So the pins are these things on the bottom part here. Okay. And so we can connect it to other uh, things and be able to control them with the code. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some different kind of peripherals, some other things that we can next to things like the microbit um, and, and be able to use them. So I really want to share some of your resources. And if at any point that I'm saying any of this stuff, somebody's like, where did you get that from? Or um, you know, what's the website again? Just just interrupt, please. Um, so let's say that on this uh, actually before I get to the peripherals, let me let me show you, share you one more thing. Share one more thing with you. Let's say that um, I want to make it so that uh, I can use one of those other kind of sensor components. So we had things that can detect temperature or sound, uh, things like that. So let's say that I want it to detect um, sound, and I want it to show kind of how loud or soft the sound is on the screen. So to do that, um, I'm going to create a new project actually. So I, I could just delete these things if I wanted to. To delete it, I can just grab it and drag it back to the menu and it'll have a trash can there that I can delete it with. Or I could just click on it and click the delete button once you do that. Or I can create a new project. So I'm going to go to the home button. The home button is up here on the top, uh, top right. And it'll take me back to where I started. And we can see that my my project is saved here, right? This, the test one is there. But I'm going to create a new project, and I'm going to call it Sound. Okay. And now I want to use that microphone to be able to, to detect sound and show it on the screen. So I'm going to say that um, I want to go to, uh, I'm going to use this forever block. So this is going to have something that's just always happening. 
So you could have inputs where I do something that triggers something to happen, or I can put in the forever block, which means that it's just always running that. Then I do this thing that says the LED menu here, this fourth one, this purple one that says LED. So I do this one that says off bar wrap up. Drag and drop it in there. And I'm going to plot a bar graph of the sound level. So if I go to the input menu, the pink one, the second one there, scroll down, there's this one here that says, all the way down, sound level. And notice it's an oval shape. And this right here where it has the zero is also an oval shape. So I'm going to grab this, I'm going to drag it over here. If I put it on top of it, it has the red dot that kind of looks like it's tethered to it. And that means I can drop it. So now I'm going to plot a bar graph of the sound level. I'm going to change this number up to 256. Okay, can you back up? Where did you get yeah. the purple one that yeah. just went in? Totally. Uh, so the purple one, the plot bar graph of, that's under the LED menu. It's the fourth menu down. And for any of these things, um, you'll notice that they're color coded. So the menu is a certain color, and the block is the same color that's in it. So it's the LED menu, so it's the fourth menu down. And then it's down here. Fine. We're able to get that one. And then sound level, this pink one is from input. It's the second menu, the input menu there. You can scroll down to find that at the very bottom sound level. So now over in the simulator, we can see that it has a simulated sound bar here. So if I grab that and go up. That means it's louder, quieter, and that's what it'll show on the screen. Okay, so that's my simulator way of simulating it. But we want to actually do it on an actual microbit. So what I'm going to do is uh, uh, I'm going to plug in my microbit and be aware it might have some code on it already. So it might be um, I'm going to plug it into my computer and be able to download it on there. So I'm going to plug it in. And once it's plugged in, I'll see that it has uh, the lights on showing that it's getting power. Um, and it actually has some stuff on it from before. But we're going to um, write over that. So instead of just clicking download, which would just, so the download button on the bottom left, if I just clicked on download, it would um, just download a file. I want it to be able to recognize the mic itself and then send that file over to it automatically. So, if you click on the three dots next to download, there is something that says connect device. So click on that connect device and it's going to take you through some steps. So I connected it, click next. I'm going to pair it, I'm going to click pair. And then when you click pair, it'll bring up this dialog box that has your micro pair, but you have to select the micro bit in the menu and click connect. It'll take a second for it to connect. Once it's connected, then I can download it. Then I'll click download, and it'll start downloading it onto the micro. So once it's on the micro bin, then it has the code that if I make noise and I start talking into it, it's going to show the sound level. Or if I do it really loud, then it's going to show the things that are happening on it. Okay. So we can see that it has input, which is the sound the output, which is the, uh, the things that are on there. So, uh, if most people have had success on it, okay? If you want to do other things, so like if I wanted to do my other one with the, um, the sad face and the, the arrow, I could download that over it. So your microbit can hold a whopping one program on it, okay? It can be a large program or a small program, but anytime you download a program onto it, it overwrites what program was on the physical microbit. What was there before? Okay. So, um, and that program will just stay on there forever. So, once you plug yours in, you might have had a program from before that was making noise or some other stuff, right? I can unplug it, put it on the shelf, leave it there for three years, come back, and it'll still have that one program. Okay. Um, so, some of the other stuff that we can do with it um, is, like I said, we can uh, have it connect to other devices. So we could hook up just like a little hobby motor to it, or another LED, or something like that. Um, there are a lot of other 
uh, companies that have created products for the micro bit as well. Um, so one thing that we could do is if we wanted to hook up a, a motor, we could. So if I have a motor here, so I'll just kind of demonstrate really quickly. Um, So there's a couple things that we could do with, with it, okay? So you might have like hobby motors, so just a little motor that has two, um, two wires to it, and if we hook a battery up to it, it will start spinning, right? But if we want to hook this up to our micro bit, we would want to be able to be able to turn it on or off, right? So be able to turn that power on and off. Um, the micro bit itself, if you look at the micro bit, you'll see that it has um, on that bottom part, Um, along the pins there, it has um, some things along the bottom here, and they're numbered, or have things written on them. There's 0, 1, 2, 3B, and G and B. So 0, 1, and 2 are different pins for sending the signal out. So maybe if I want to turn something on and off, I would send the signal out through 0, 1, or 2 to say, you know, on or off. Okay? 3B is 3 volts. So it can send out three volts, and GND is ground. So if I wanted to create a circuit, I could just connect my micro bit or connect the motor to ground and three volts, and that would turn it off. Right? So just like if I had a battery, right? it works the same way. So if I have my my um, motor here, let's see if I connect this here and to here, it should get it to start spinning. If I put this in the right way, okay, there we go. So it's spinning there. I've just connected one one of the ends to. I don't know if you can hear that. But, uh, it's it's spinning, but it's just on, right? It's just on all the time, and that's because I have created a circuit with a power source and it's on. So if I want to make it to be able to turn it off, I have to have something special to be able to send a signal to a motor to turn it on or off. And there are certain things. So this is a resource that if you're using micro that you should be aware of. Are there are certain motors called servos. So a servo is a specific type of motor that's used in robotics or other things like that. And the special thing about a servo is that it has three wires. So it doesn't you just have the two wires for power, right? So two wires for power, one that you put to the positive side of the battery and the negative side, or to, in this case, three volts in ground. Um, it has three wires. So two of them are for power, and the third one is for a signal to come in to tell it something. So either to turn it on or off, or something like that. Okay, so that's what a servo is. Um, and there are two types of servos. Okay. The first type of servo is one that's called a positional servo, and the other one is called a rotational servo. Okay, so a positional servo is one that um, it doesn't spin like all the way around like a regular hobby motor. You put power and it just keeps spinning, right? A positional servo is one that you can put into a specific angle. So usually it's from um, uh, zero to 180 degrees. So it does like a half circle that it can do, okay? And uh, your signal that you tell it is you tell it an angle you want to go to. So maybe I tell it, I want you to go to zero degrees and then 90 degrees and then 45 and then 180. And so it'll go to those specific positions. Okay? So that's how you would program a servo like that. So if you had a robot, that would be like the type of servo that you would put on the arm, okay, for the arm of a robot. So that you can tell if I want the arm to go here, and then there, and then there, okay? Right? So that's what a positional servo would do. A rotational servo is the other type of servo, and this one does spin all the way around, okay? And for that one, you don't tell it like an angle to go to, you kind of tell it two things. You can tell it how fast you want it to spin and how long you want it to spin for. So you might say spin at, you know, 100% for two seconds. And so if, for a robot, this would be like what you have for wheels. So you're telling it, I want this wheel, you know, 
know, the right wheel to spin uh, 100% of speed for two seconds, and so then it would spin and it would make your robot turn because one wheel would spin and the other wheel would spin. Maybe then you want to tell the other wheel spin at uh, minus 50%, meaning it's going to spin the opposite direction for one second. And so then you know, so you can you can get things to move by telling specific wheels how long to spin and at what speed to spin. So that's the other type of servo that you use. So rotation, uh, positional and rotational servo. Those are two different types of, of servo. Do you have? And so we could hook these up to a micro bit um, using these wires. So we would just put some wires into each of these and we connect it to different parts of our micro bit. So we probably connect it to the, um, we have two of the wires to be connected to three volts and ground, and then a third wire to one of the other pins here, the zero, one, or two, uh, sending out a signal to that specific one through, through the, the zero, one, or two pins. Does that make sense? So that's how we would control things. And so uh, it can get kind of um, clunky. Uh, we would use things like alligator clips. So we'd use some wires like this to be able to connect to a um, uh, to a to something. So we would just clip it onto a, a pin. We clip another one onto the other ones, and we connect those to different parts of. So that's one way of doing it with these. But there are some other um, uh, products out there that help with this. So one, one place that creates products for it uh, is something called, um, uh, they're called hummingbirds. Okay? And so here's, for example, a hummingbird kit. And in it, it has some different uh, components that you would be able to use with it. So one thing that it has is the hummingbird um, body, I guess you would call it. Um, so this is the thing that you would then plug into your microbit, you would be able to code, and you plug it into the hummingbird, and then you would be able to add different components to it very easily. So if I wanted to add a, um, a servo, for example, like if I wanted to use this one, then it has a place where I can just plug this into the, the board here, and it's all plugged in. I don't have to worry about alligator clips to clip it to these things. And I can put this in. I've got places for other servos. I have places to plug in um, lights. So if I want to put in, for example, a um, LED light, multicolored LED light, I can use those. And the wires can, can clip into here really easily. So this is something that you could use to um, be able to build a device a lot easier. Um, and uh, something that we've done here is we do a pro program uh, for robotics that uses these hummingbirds. And so we've created some simple uh, bodies and we'll add wheels to it to be able to do it. So I've got here uh, just a piece of, of plastic. We just hot glued the two servos onto it, the body and the battery pack. And then wheels would just come on here. And um, and so then I plug in my my micro bit and I'd be able to control this uh, with the, the micro bit to be able to control the different wheels. Okay. So uh, with different devices like the hummingbird, for example, there are um, different kind of add-ons, extensions to the programming that we have here. So. For this, if I wanted to create a program to control this um, this little robot, and it comes with screws, you can screw in the, the so it can fall off. You can screw the wheels off. Um, I would add an extension to it. So if I go down to uh, right towards the bottom where it says extensions, um, so just above the advanced, go to extensions, and it'll give you. Um, Different things, so different products will have this. I'm going to look up Hummingbird. And there is an extension here for the Hummingbird. So I'm going to click on this, and it's going to add a new menu here. You'll see here, it now has this kind of T 
teal color hummingbird menu. If I click on that, it shows me some different blocks that I'll be able to use for the different components. So if you're going to be getting other components for something like the microbit, um, there'll be extensions that they'll create. You'd be able to use any of the regular um, blocks to be able to control it. Um, they, they would work for it. You'd be able to control it with the regular blocks. But these extensions sometimes make it just a little bit easier to be able to use their, their products with it. So for instance, with this, if I wanted to have um, the rotational servo here, number one, and you can see here that this one is plugged into, uh, if this one is plugged into port one, and this one's plugged into port two, then I would be able to use this. Now maybe I'm gonna, let me just take this stuff off, and I'm gonna add something. Maybe I say the input is when I press the A button, I want it to, Make the rotational servo uh, for one go at 100%. And if I press the B button, I'll go to inputs and I'll change this to the B button. And I want the rotational servo of 26. Rotational servo of servo 2 to go at minus 50 or so. And so if I download this to my how we can be able to control different devices with the microcontroller. So simple programming, we can add different things. So if I wanted to have it go through like a maze, for example, I might build up that when I press the A button, maybe I'm going to have it do, um, you know, do turn the rotational servo on one for 100%, then I'll have it wait. So if I come down here, I'll have it pause for seconds, and then maybe I'll have it stop. Right? So if I make this one right now. And then I'll have it go to 0%. Right? So this is how I'm telling it that I want it to go, turn on for 100%, wait for 2 seconds, so it's going to go for 2 seconds, and then turn it off. So then it'll move just that amount. And then I can add more, so maybe add it through a different thing. Okay. So we can build up things uh, for a project like that. Okay. So that's using uh, different devices, like Hummingbird, um, to be able to add to the capabilities of your, um, of your microbits. So we can add things like that. If we wanted to add other uh, devices that we want to turn on and off, aren't specifically made for this. So like a servo is made for uh, a microcontroller, right? So we have things that can control the power to it, um, but then also we have a signal that we can send to it. What if I want to turn on like a desk lamp, right? Or be able to control a desk lamp with my microcontroller. I wouldn't be able to do it with just as it is because the desk lamp has, you know, 
the two prongs for the power, um, I need something to be able to send a signal to it to turn it on. And for that, what you would have to use is something called a relay switch. So a relay switch is something that will allow you to make something be a switch that you can turn it on. You might have a switch here. So this is the thing that is the switch. So I'm going to connect one here. So this is the thing that's the switch, and so for the switch, I'm going to have it connect to one side of my thing, and I'm going to have the other side connect to my micro bit. I'll have it go to three volts, and then I'll have one that goes from ground to the other side of. So this is what we would use. This is how like a circuit would be created. So imagine that this were my the, like a battery. Right? So if I connect my my motor to my power source and then to a switch, if I turn the switch on and off, it would turn the motor on. Okay? So that's how we can create a simple circuit. So if So that's just uh, how you would create a circuit with the switch. So this is my switch. But now i got to have some way to be able to control my switch to turn it on and off. And so for that, we're going to use another clip here to connect to one of the pins on my um, uh, on my micro bit. So we're going to connect it to, let's say, pin zero. Okay. So then, if I turn here, this two, make sure I got this thing right. So ground now. So now I have one side of this connected to the motor. The other side is connected to pin zero. So now I can create code that says, if I press the A button, I want it to send a signal to the zero pin to turn it on. If I press the B button, I want to send a signal to the zero pin to turn it off. Something like that. And so then I'd be able to build that to be able to turn it on. So that would be able to control the motor here, or if I was using a desk lamp, I just put that there and control the desk lamp with this piece of my okay. A motor to it, and so, It'll detect low moisture, and then it turns on the water pump, and then once the water pump goes in, it gets high enough moisture level, level it turns the water pump. Okay. So we can have some feedback from the system to, to do that. And so there's, you know, like a project here on plant water system to do that type of thing. Um, there are also um, different um, uh, courses or lessons that you could use from different websites that they have linked in here about using the micro bits. So it'll take you step by step through using, uh, gives you like a full curriculum on how to use uh, the micro bits and take it through some different parts of it. So I'm not gonna go through all this, but there's lots of different resources here that you can, that you can look through and, and be able to use. One thing that I find is really nice are these ones here called coding cards. And so what this is essentially is just a one page sheet that shows, like for instance here, this is a, uh, let's just open this one up. This is a, a game that you can create, which is a, um, a reaction game. So you'll have two people playing. You hook up uh, a switch, uh, two different switches to it, and it shows you how to hook them up. So if you create a switch, have a switch, uh, it shows you to connect one wire to this pin, another wire to this pin, and for the other switch, connect them here. Um, and then it shows you the code that you would use to create it. And essentially what it does is it uh, counts down on the screen, and then waits a random amount of time, and says go. And then the people will try and hit their button first. Whoever hits their button first, it shows an arrow to that side showing that they won. So um, you'll be able to use things like uh, uh, sensing things from the, the, the buttons, but also it you know uses some coding on thinking about how do I wait a random amount of time, and then show this on the screen. Um, the 
these are nice because it's just a one page sheet. So if you have students, uh, they could be working on a different project at the same time, you just hand them the sheets um, and they can kind of follow along. So those are a bunch of different types of resources that are available. 